Eight money management tips every freelancer needs. Did you know that freelancers, on average, lose 20% of their income due to poor financial management? I mean, that's enough to fund a brand new high-end laptop or even a vacation. If you're also a freelancer who's struggling to manage your finances, then you're in the right place. Because today, we're talking about eight essential money management tips that every freelancer needs in 2024. So, without wasting any time, let's start things off with our first tip. Set aside money for taxes. Yeah, taxes. Everyone's favorite topic, right? If you're a freelancer, especially in the US, you know that tax season can feel like a horror movie that never ends. Unlike traditional employees who have their taxes automatically deducted from their paychecks, freelancers need to be more proactive. This means setting aside a portion of your income for taxes every time you get paid. But I work through platforms like Fiverr and Upwork. Don't they take care of taxes? Well, not exactly. Yes, these platforms do provide tax forms, but they don't withhold taxes from your earnings. So it's still up to you to set aside money for taxes. Consider opening a separate savings account just for this purpose. This can help you avoid the temptation to dip into your tax savings for other expenses. A pro tip here is to make essential tax payments throughout the year. This can help you avoid a big lump sum payment during tax season and potential penalties for underpayment. Moving on to tip number two, track your income. As a freelancer, your income might come from different sources. You might have multiple clients, work on various platforms, or offer different services. Now, each of these income streams is a player in your financial game. And to win the game, you need to know how each player is performing, right? To track your income, you can use a simple spreadsheet or a financial tracking app. Just make sure to record every payment you receive, no matter how small. Include the date, the amount, the client, and the project. This will give you a clear picture of your income trends. Let's say you're a graphic designer and you've been charging $30 per logo. But after tracking your income, you realize that the logos are taking you longer than other projects. So you're actually making less per hour on logos than on other projects. With this insight, you might decide to increase your rate for logos. And remember our chat about setting aside money for taxes? Well, tracking your income makes it easier to calculate how much you need to set aside. Next up, tip number three, track your expenses. You have both personal and business expenses. Personal expenses might include rent, groceries, and Netflix subscriptions. Because we all need a good binge watch session after a long day of work, right? Business expenses, on the other hand, might include things like software subscriptions, office supplies, and a cup of coffee you bought during your client meeting. Tracking your expenses can help you understand where your money is actually going. You might be surprised to find out how much you're spending on takeout or how little you're investing in your professional development. Tracking your expenses can also help you identify areas where you can cut back and, of course, tax purposes. Did you know many business expenses are tax deductible, which means they can reduce your taxable income and potentially save you a lot of money. But to claim these deductions, you need to keep track of your expenses and keep your receipts. Now that we're done tracking our income and expenses, how do we plan for our financial future? That's where tip number four comes in. Create a budget. As a freelancer, creating a budget is much more crucial because, unlike a regular nine to five job, your income might fluctuate from month to month. You know, one month you might be swimming in cash and the next you might be living on a shoestring budget. That's where this tip comes in handy. To create a good budget, first of all, you need to know how much money you're making. Include all your income sources, not just your freelancing gigs. Next, 
List down all your expenses from tip number three and set some financial goals. What are you saving for? A new laptop, a vacation, retirement? Your goals will guide your budgeting process. Now, divide your income among your expenses and savings goals. A popular method is the 50 slash 30 slash 20 rule, where 50% of your income goes to needs, 30% to wants, and 20% to savings. But feel free to tweak these percentages to suit your lifestyle and goals. Next up, tip number five. Set up an emergency fund. It's a stash of money you set aside to cover the financial surprises life throws your way. What if your laptop, the one you use for all your work, suddenly dies? Or a global pandemic hits, causing a significant slowdown in your work? As a freelancer, since your income can be unpredictable, having a financial cushion can provide you with a sense of security and allow you to take calculated risks to grow your freelance business. So start by determining how much you need. Normally, you should aim for three to six months worth of living expenses. But if your income is relatively stable, three months may be enough. Or if your income fluctuates a lot, you might want to aim for a larger cushion. Moving up onto tip number six. Review your prices frequently. As freelancers, you often undercharge for your services. You fear that if you charge too much, you'll lose clients. But that's not the thing. You're running a business and businesses need to make a profit. It's essential to review your prices regularly. Are you charging enough to cover your business expenses, taxes, and desired profit margin? Are you factoring in the value you provide to your clients? Keep in mind that clients don't just pay for your time. They also pay for your expertise, your creativity, and the value you bring to their business. If you find that you're not making enough, it might be time to raise your prices. Yes, yes, you might lose some clients, but you'll also make room for clients who are willing to pay for the value you provide. Next time you quote a project, try increasing your rates slightly. You might be surprised to find that most clients are willing to pay a bit more for quality work. Next up, tip number seven. Might seem a bit boring, but trust us, it's super important. Using a business bank account. I'm just a freelancer, not a big corporation. Come on, do I really need a business bank account? The answer is a resounding yes. First, it helps you keep your personal and business finances separate. This makes it easier to track your business income and expenses, which can save you a lot of headache come tax time. Second, it makes you look more professional. Imagine sending a client an invoice from your personal account versus a business account. Which one do you think looks more professional? Having a business bank account can also help protect your personal assets. In the unfortunate event that you get sued, your personal assets could be at risk if you don't have a clear separation between your personal and business finances. So, even if you're a one-person operation, consider opening a business bank account. Moving on to tip number eight and the last one for today. Use financial management tools. In this digital age, there are tons of tools and apps designed to make financial management easier for freelancers. Invoicing and payment apps can help you create professional invoices, track payments, and even accept credit card payments. Some popular options include FreshBooks, QuickBooks, and Zoho Invoice. You can also try budgeting apps. To create a budget, track your income and expenses, and even set financial goals. Yeah, five tips in just one. Some popular options include Mint, Y-N-A-B, You Need a Budget, and Pocket Guard. For taxes, there are some tools that can help you calculate your taxes, track your deductions, and even file your tax return, like TurboTax, h &R Block, and Tax Act. The key is to find the tools that work best for you and your business. So don't be afraid to try out options and see what works best for you. 
Well, that's it for today. Eight essential money management tips every freelancer needs. So what are your go-to money management tips? Do you have any financial advice for other freelancers? Drop your comments below. Before you go, don't forget to check our recent video on the art of negotiation, how to save money and get the best deals. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and press the bell icon. Thanks for watching.